Hello and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Andy Schreer. Today in church, we've been talking a lot about a guy named Thomas, who history now knows as Doubting Thomas. You see, when all the other disciples went to tell him that Jesus had risen from the dead, he wouldn't believe it. I won't believe it unless I can see it, he said. Well, today in our sermon, we are going to see that seeing isn't believing. It's actually the other way around. Believing is seeing. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever heard the name Roy Benavides? You can see his name plastered all over all kinds of landmarks in our part of Texas, on, on highways, on schools and buildings. But do you know who Roy Benavides was? Roy Benavides was born in Cuero, Texas, but he grew up in, in El Campo. In 1952, Roy Benavides enlisted in the U.S. Army during the Korean War. He served in, in Korea and then here in the United States. In 1965, he was sent uh, to be an advisor to Vietnam for the South Vietnamese Army. It was during that time that he stepped on a landmine and was severely injured to the point that the doctors told him that he would never walk again and that when he was released from the hospital, he would have to be discharged from the army. And that broke his heart. So every night, unbeknownst to his doctors, he would drag himself out of bed onto the floor over to the wall and for hours would pull himself up and down on the wall, trying to get his legs and back stronger. A year later, Roy Benavides walked out of that hospital. And they assigned him to, to desk duty in the, the army here in the States. But he still wanted to fight. And so he continued to train his body physically to the point that he was accepted into the Special Forces. He became a Green Beret and was sent back to Vietnam. On May 2nd, 1968, a 12-man unit of Special Forces were trapped in the jungle, surrounded by 1,000 Viet Cong soldiers. Rescue attempts couldn't reach them. And Roy Benavides heard about their plight on the radio. He went and found a helicopter pilot who he convinced to take him out to the jungle and drop him outside of where those, those Viet Cong soldiers were. And from there, he ran through the jungle, through the thousand enemy soldiers, to the, where the, the injured unit was. And there, for 12 hours, by himself, he single-handedly fought off the enemy, saving those 12 men. He ended up pulling eight of them out of the jungle alive. Now, there isn't time enough in a sermon to give you all the details of, of Roy Benavides' harrowing story, but suffice it to say, he made Rambo look like a wimp. I'm telling you, he killed dozens of enemy soldiers most of them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. By the time it was all over, he had a fractured jaw and 37, 37 bullet and bayonet wounds. When he had finally pulled the last man out of the jungle into the helicopter, he collapsed unconscious outside the helicopter. Medics thought he was dead, and they put him in a body bag. Because his jaw was broken, he couldn't speak. He finally was able to spit on one of his doctors to show that he was still alive. Roy Benavides spent months in the hospital afterwards, but he, he recovered from all of his injuries and was awarded numerous medals of valor. 
But years later, when they wanted to give him the Congressional Medal of Honor, they couldn't. Because to get the Congressional Medal of Honor, you need to have an eyewitness account of what happened. And by that time, Benavides believed that all the other soldiers were dead. So that's when Brian O'Connor, the former radio man from that unit, came forward. Benavides thought he had actually died in the battle. And he gave his eyewitness testimony to everything that happened. When President Ronald Reagan presented Roy Benavides with his, with his Medal of Honor, he turned to the press and he said, if the story of his heroism were a movie script, nobody would believe it. I mean, if you have a chance this week, go online and look up the story of, of Roy Benavides. It's incredible. In fact, it seems almost too incredible to believe, even with eyewitnesses. And sometimes we, see, we hear stories that seem too incredible to believe. But then maybe somebody we know, who we trust, tells us that they saw it. Because we trust them, we believe the story. But some stories are are harder to believe than others. Sometimes we doubt. Sometimes we wonder whether it's true or not. And that's why our topic for today is so tough. Because today we are talking about faith. About believing. About trusting in things that seem pretty unbelievable. In our second reading for today, the Apostle John told us, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and, and touched with our hands, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was, from the, was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the word of the Lord. Like Thomas, John was an eyewitness of Jesus' life, of his, his miracles, of His teachings, of His death and resurrection. Like Thomas, John had, had touched Jesus' hands and side after his resurrection. But did you know that there were actually a lot of eyewitnesses who saw Jesus alive after his resurrection? The Apostle Paul tells us that there were over 500 people who saw Jesus alive who touched him, who talked with him during the 40 days after his resurrection. Over 500 people. And one of the things we need to understand about our faith as Christians is that it isn't a blind faith. We aren't believing something of which there is no evidence. We aren't believing something which is contradicted by, by history and science. We aren't believing something which has been proven to be false. I mean, the Bible doesn't contradict the historical evidence. If you look at what we've discovered from archaeology and ancient manuscripts, the Bible basically agrees with it. The Bible doesn't disagree with, with science. What we can see and observe in nature, it can all be explained by the Bible. Besides that, we have eyewitness accounts of dozens of people who saw Jesus and knew him firsthand. Nobody, not history, not science, not the most intelligent university professors in the world have been able to prove the Bible to be untrue or that God doesn't exist. I mean, they can't. They haven't. Any historian worth his salt, whether he or she is a Christian or not, 
will tell you that the most influential person in all of history was Jesus. The most influential and best-selling book of all time, by far, is the Bible. That tells you there's something to all of this. You know, ours is not a blind faith. But it is faith. We have the testimony of trustworthy men in the Bible, but we don't have videotape evidence. We can't see Jesus with our own eyes. We can't, can't touch his hands and side as Thomas, John, and the other apostles did. As the writer of the Hebrews tells us, faith is being sure of what we do not see. We trust in the testimony of those men who lived 2,000 years ago. We trust what the Bible says, even though we can't see it. And sometimes that's hard for us, but I want, I want you to understand this. Seeing isn't believing. Seeing isn't believing. Did you know that thousands, thousands of people participated in and witnessed firsthand NASA's first landing on the moon? I mean, there's a lot of video of it, and there's tons of evidence that it happened. And yet many people today don't believe that we actually landed on the moon because video can be faked, right? Hollywood CGI can make anything seem real. In our world of fake news and, and never-ending conspiracy theories, it's hard for us to believe anything we hear or see, even when there are eyewitnesses. Even when we have videotape and can see it with our own eyes. And the same is true when it comes to the Bible. You know, sometimes we think it would just be so much easier to believe in Jesus if we could just see him, if we could, if we could see what the people of his day saw. But you need to remember that thousands upon thousands of people saw Jesus. They witnessed his miracles. They heard him teach. And yet the overwhelming majority of them rejected Jesus. Because seeing isn't believing. Believing is seeing. That's what Thomas, Jesus was trying to teach Thomas in our gospel for today. The only way to really see God, the only way to have fellowship with him, as John tells us here, is through faith. By trusting that what the Bible says is true, even though we can't see it, even though we don't have video evidence of it. And that's hard. Faith is hard. Some of the things the Bible says are hard for us to swallow. Even if you read the entire Bible, you would still have a lot of questions. God doesn't promise to tell us everything we want to know. He doesn't explain it all to us. And then we look around, and sometimes it seems like he isn't there. Certain things happen in our lives, and we start to wonder whether all this is really true or not. In the end, it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can say, yeah. I believe that Jesus lived, died, and rose again for me. I believe that he is the Son of God and my Savior, even though I can't see it, even though I can't prove it. That is faith. And that's what the Holy Spirit works in us as we, as we hear his word. You know, one of the fun things for me as a pastor is that when I'm preaching or, or teaching in Bible class, oftentimes I'll see you doing this. Yeah. 
And I'm not proving anything to you. I'm not showing you up here irrefutable physical evidence that this is true. I'm just repeating to you what those men 2,000 years ago heard and saw. And the Holy Spirit leads you to say, yeah, that's right. And that is faith. As Jesus told Thomas, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. God blesses us through that faith. As John tells us, through that faith, we have life. We have the heaven that Jesus won for us. Through that faith, we, have, we are united with God. We have fellowship with God. God lives in you. You know that. You can feel that at times. You can see it in your lives, even though you can't see it with your, your physical eyes. So my encouragement is that when you find yourself struggling at times with your faith, when you, you find yourself wondering, is this all really true? Remember, first of all, that ours is not a blind faith. You are not believing this in the face of overwhelming evidence to the contrary. There's a lot of evidence which points to the Bible being true. But in the end, it's, it's by faith. Go back to the, the trustworthy testimony of the eyewitnesses who were there. Keep coming to church and hearing God speak to you through his word. Come in and have fellowship with him through the sacrament of Holy Communion. Because it's through those means of grace that the Holy Spirit will work in you the confidence to say, yeah, that's right. Even though we can't see it with our eyes. You know, in the end, if you don't remember anything else from our our sermon this morning. Remember this. Seeing isn't believing. Believing is seeing. Amen. And now may that, that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.